Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a really cool tutorial about how to make realistic human eyes. In this video tutorial, we will be covering how to model and texture a human eye. So I'm very excited about this tutorial and let's get started. So first of all, I'd like to demonstrate to you this model. This is just a regular model. And as you can see, her eyes are just regular spheres, which is basically what most people do with their eyes is uh, just create a model that has a sphere and then they texture it. Well, that will work, but what we really want to do is make it even more realistic. So this is what my character looks like now when I render it. She's got subsurface scattering, she's got skin textured in substance, which you guys can see in the tutorial about it below. And you'll notice that our eyes look, you know, they look okay, but we can definitely push this a lot further. So I just wanted to show you a before, before, uh, and then I'll show you an after. Now let's talk about the human eye. As you can see, we have this beautiful color in the center, a black pupil, and then we have the cornea, which is the white-ish area. Now what's fascinating about the eye is that the iris is in fact only a third of the actual eyeball. So we're seeing only a third of our giant circular object inside our socket. So that's actually pretty interesting. Also notice that um, we do have veins and that cornea is in fact not exactly white. It is actually a little bit more grayish blue. So to make a realistic eye, you really have to analyze the colors as well. Eyes are extremely reflective. Our cornea is made out of water, so it does do a lot of reflection. So that's also something we need to consider when we're texturing an eye. So this diagram is an example of what the eye looks like. A couple of things I want you to observe is that the cornea is in fact not circular, but it is bulbous. It sticks out a little bit around here, which gives us these really great refractions of water. Another thing I want you guys to observe is that the pupil in fact is not straight or rounded on the outside. It's actually concave. It's really important to capture that in a model because of the way the lighting is going to hit it. Our pupil is black. All of this is important is because we need to be able to capture this really fascinating thing that happens when light hits our eye. So you'll notice a little hot spot right here on the corner of the eye. You'll notice also that there's a shadow behind it and that it's a highlight at the bottom of it, so across the eye. You'll notice that it happens to every single eye. This is important to capture because our iris is in fact concave. And the only way to capture that is to make sure our model is also concave. This applies not only to photorealistic human eyeballs, but also to cartoon eyes. So for example, here is Pixar. Pixar is famous, of course, for its beautiful animation. But you'll notice that it has a little hot spot. Notice that it's shadow behind it and highlighted across the eye over here to the opposite side of the light. So it's actually brighter across the way. And that's because our eye, our iris is, is in fact concave. So we have to make sure we capture that. So not only is it photorealistic, it's also in Pixar movies and also in DreamWorks movies. So you'll notice here how dramatic that shadow is with the highlight across the way. And if you take a look at any animation posters, you'll see that as well. So it's one of those things that makes the eye so beautiful. There is a diverse color of eyes. So make sure that you capture it by looking at reference and capturing the beautiful colors of irises, pupils, and cornea. Now we're going to get a little bit into close-ups. Eyes are a little bit intimidating when you get close, but it's important to see how veiny they are. Um, our eyes are in fact very veiny, so we have to capture that, especially if you're trying to do photorealistic. Another thing you'll notice is that, again, I mentioned it earlier, but we do have a little bit of blotchy pinks, but this is in fact more like a grayish blue, it's not white. So again, make sure you capture the color of a grayish blue to make your eye look real, otherwise it just looks white and it's kind of creepy. And our iris is in fact very bumpy. So that's something that we also have to capture when we texture. So now that we've analyzed the eye, let's go ahead and start modeling. Okay, so obviously we're gonna start off with a sphere. And just to make things a little bit easier on me, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this sphere 90 degrees and I'm also going to scale it and bring it up. Now I'm going to increase my subdivision because uh, this I do want it to be nice and smooth, but you can also just press the number three, which will give us a nice smooth sphere. Or I'm pressing one so that it would go back to low poly. And I'm going to grab as a vertex and using the letter B, I'm going to turn on soft select. And if I hold down B, middle mouse and drag, I can get this little paintbrush. And the purpose for this is that it's gonna help me model. So now that I have that selection, I can start bringing this out a little bit. So that's going to create this nice bulbous shape. 
Now I don't want it to look like an egg, I want it to have a little bit more of that bulbous look, so to do that I am going to hit B to get out of that, grab one of these, and then just kind of scale it in and bring it closer. Then I can go in and just kind of scale these just a little bit to kind of shape it a little bit more. I don't want a point at the end that's going to make it a little too weird, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and just kind of make it a little bit less. I don't want it to poke out too much. Something like that will work. Again, press the number three, and now we have a little bit of a cornea. I can always manipulate this later. Next, so we are going to create our iris. So let's go ahead and grab this torus. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I am going to reduce the subdivision. And I am going to crush it a little bit. So scale it flat. I'm going to press F to focus. And I'm going to bring this in like this. As I mentioned before, this is a little bit of a concave. So grabbing an edge, going to double click. And again, if I click on the letter B, I can get a soft select. Now my selection's too big, so I'm gonna hold down B and just make and drag. I can make that selection and then go ahead and push this back. I can always grab more edges if I need to and kind of bring this in. Now I don't wanna push it too far. It's not gonna look accurate. So I'm gonna get out of soft select and I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit more. Let's see, let me grab these edges and just kind of crush them a little bit and bring them in. Something like that. And what we also want to do is double click on these two edges, maybe even this one as well, and then bring this out. Now the reality is, is that we don't need these back faces, so I'm probably going to get rid of them. But you do want to have a little bit of like a, almost like a little bit of an edge sticking out because we want to capture that uh, nice edge. Right. What I'm going to do is grab faces, click, double click, click, double click, delete. Then I'm going to double click on, whoops, double click on this one, delete. I might grab these edges and just make sure that I bring them in a little bit. And just grab these guys and just push them in. to number three and we have something that looks like this. All right, let's bring it in into our eyeball. I'm going to go look into the, in my, my version is side view. Let's take a look at wireframe and go ahead and place it on front of the. Now let's talk about scale. This is supposed to be a third of the eye. I'm looking at the Maya scale here. So if I want to be a little bit more accurate, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. I guess I can do eight. So if it's about here, then if I bring this into the center, so it should be a little bit bigger than two units, which I think that's about right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can't see anything. So let's assign a new material. I am going to be signing an AI standard surface. This is going to be my cornea shader. And I'm going to be working with this transmission. So transmission is what's going to make it look like water. So if I go ahead and increase this transmission, you'll notice that this is in the wrong area, but you can at least now see what is going on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this view, grab the iris, and bring it forward. Now you'll notice that the bulbous section is a little too large. So I can either, I might, be able to scale this down a little bit. I can scale up the iris if I want to, or in reality, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some edges and scale them. Let's label this cornea geo, iris geo. Let's 
delete the history, center the pivot, freeze the transformations. And just to make this a little bit better, let's go ahead and go to our transmission. And I'm going to click on this little output. I'm going to look for a ramp. Perfect. Bring these colors together. Then I'm going to press the number six on my keyboard so I can see what's happening. You'll notice that it's on the other side. So let me go back to my ramp and flip the colors. And what I'm going to do is use this to figure out the ramp, like where my transition is from my iris into my pupil. I'm try to get these a little closer. Now I do, don't want to do it like linear. I do want in fact to have a nice transition between the iris and the pupil. So I don't want it to be straight. I want it to be like a perfect line. I don't want it to be a perfect line. I do want a little bit of that transition between the cornea and the iris. So something like that. Well, actually, let's add a floor. And let's add a light. I always use Arnold's Lights Physical Sky. I'm going to stop that. So far, so good. And let's rotate this so that I can get the nice little highlight. You can see that we're doing a nice job capturing that shadow underneath the iris and then also a nice little highlight. Now, the shader is pretty simple, so nothing, not much is going on, but you get the idea that we are seeing a nice dark area underneath where the light is and a little brighter out here. Now, the transition between this and the cornea and the iris, I'm not too thrilled about, so I'm going to smooth that out a little bit more. So let me go into my shader, get in here a little closer. I'm just going to help with that a little bit more. Yeah, I definitely like that a lot better. It's a little smoother. That's nice. Let's go back to the iris. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to assign a new material. Again, I'm choosing an AI standard surface. This is going to be just the iris shader. It's up to you what color you want. Um, I might choose a nice brown. Or, of course, you can always choose something blue. I am going to increase the roughness because it should have some specularity, but the reality is, is that the cornea should be the most reflective object here. So I have nice roughness here, and I am going to change the specular color to a little bit lighter blue so that you get some nice highlights. So it's going to look a little bit more uh, metallic almost, but it's going to add, it's going to add a little bit more personality to the piece. So let me change this back to zero. That's the nice thing about freezing your transformations. You can always put it back. Now I feel like the pupil is really large so let me bring this out and I'm going to grab some edges go ahead and scale this in a little bit just to make sure I capture that concave just bring that out bring that in a little bit more again What's really great about the transmission for Arnold is that it comes with a refraction. So in this side, you can see the bulge or that bulbous part of the cornea and it will refract the light so you can see the eye, which is really, that's very, very, that's actually considered very realistic. All right, so sometimes we are gonna get light inside here. So we wanna make sure there's something inside for the pupil. So I'm just gonna choose just a regular disc Gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to reduce the subdivision. And then let's go ahead and assign a new material. Um, I'm actually just going to use a uh, surface shader. The surface shader is just a shader that has no highlight or shadow information. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this Irish shader. And everything is going to be black. And then I can just take this and move it to the back. So I can guarantee that whenever there is going to be light, it will always see something black. So this is going to be my pupil. Pupil Geo. And there we have it. We have very quickly created a eyeball geometry. We have the cornea, the iris, and the pupil. And we also have a little bit of lighting so that we can see what's going on. We also have a transparency being driven by a ramp. And the models is accurate to realistic eyeballs. So the next part of this tutorial is going to be to texture it. We want to make sure that we capture the beautiful aspect of the eyes, including the beautiful textures in the inside. Also, the cornea needs veins and a couple of other things that we need to do to make this more realistic. All right, let's see what this looks like with our current characters. So let's see what it all comes down to. So this is the character so far. I'm going to go to File. I'm just going to import it. It is humongous. <laughs> 
That's no problem. Let's go ahead and scale it down. Now she doesn't have, she has a body, no textures just yet. I'm still working on her, but uh, it's getting there. Let's go ahead and bring this eye in. Now she's a giant eye. Let's plug it in. Okay, now remember, there's no texture on this one. So, all right, let's see what that looks like with this one eyeball. <laughs> Even though there is a no texture on this left eye, her right, you'll notice that it looks a lot better than the one on her left, our right. So even though the textures is much more realistic, and this is actually captured from an, eye, from an eyeball, the fact that the shape of the model is accurate, it makes her look way more realistic and much more beautiful than, some, than just the sphere with the texture on it. So keep that in mind. Uh, this applies to video games as well. A lot of games now put a, uh, a concave eye with a coat on it so that um, uh, eyes just look better and more natural that way. So we still have a ways to go for the eye, at least when it comes to texturing, but already you can see the big difference between a sphere versus a modeled eye. So again, I hope uh, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment below. Um, it's fun creating these things. So uh, anytime you guys like and share, it definitely encourages me to make more of these tutorials. So please um, subscribe to my channel as well because that encourages me to uh, make more. If you want to take a look more, uh, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find three models, free trainings, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. And again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I look forward to seeing your work. If you guys create these models and put it in your characters, I would love to see your characters come to life. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next tutorial when we start texturing the eye. See you then.